Hello and welcome back to my Linux Commands for Beginner series. This is video number four. So by now you have a Linux system of some sort to use to go through the remainder of the videos in the series, whether that be a VPS, a virtual machine, a physical machine, a Linux server, uh, basically you have something to go along with. So um, in this video, what we're going to do is look at some basic file system navigation. We're going to expand on these concepts as we go through the series, but I just felt like this would be a good place to start. So I'll show you what I mean uh, when I say navigating the file system. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So here I am on my laptop. I'm currently running MX Linux, just something I decided to test out. So not my normal distribution, but one I like to fall back onto every now and again. But it doesn't really matter what distribution you are running because all the commands I'm about to give you are about the same on every distribution. I mean, the bash prompt, of course, looks different for me than it likely does for you unless you're also on MX Linux. But other than the prompt itself looking different, the commands are the same. Now. When I say file system, what exactly do I mean? Well, file system can mean a couple of things in Linux. It could mean the way that the hard drive was formatted. If you use Windows, for example, you're probably familiar with the NTFS file system or the FAT file system. And Linux is no different. It has file systems for its hard drive partitions as well. But that's not actually what I'm talking about here. File system also refers to the directory or folder structure of the actual hard drive that Linux was installed onto. So I could run the ls command, which stands for list storage, and press enter, and then I'm going to see a list of folders in my current working directory. Now your output may be completely different than this because each distribution comes with different default folders in the home directory, which is where I am right now. More on that in a moment. But the takeaway is that the ls command stands for list storage. But the file system actually starts with a single forward slash. So if I do ls space and then a forward slash, I basically see the file system at the very beginning of the hard drive. And this will probably look the same for most of you. There might be some differentiation here, but not much. Most of the, or if not all of the important directories here are going to be the same. And yes, these are directories. It's very common for a folder or a directory to be colored blue. You can't always rely on that. So I'm gonna show you how to actually tell the difference here in a moment. But I just wanted to make sure you understand what I mean by file system. And what I mean by that in this context is the directory structure of the Linux file system or the way the hard drive is um, set up or the default folder structure. And the folders you're seeing here each have a designated purpose. If you run Windows, for example, you're probably accustomed to a C drive and it has program files, it has C users and so on. Linux is like that. It's equivalent of C colon users is going to be the home directory. We see the home directory right here. That's where the users are. So if I do ls slash home like that, you can see I have one folder in there, just my name. That's mine. That's my user directory. That's essentially what that is. I could type clear to clear the screen, but also I could do control L to also clear the screen. Control L may not always work on every distribution, but if control L doesn't work, you can also type clear. And that just basically wipes the screen so you can start back at the first line. So back to the ls command, the list storage command. Um, this is probably the most important command to, to know because you gotta be, be able to list the items in a directory or where you're located. But you can also do options, for example, or add little arguments, if you will, to a command. So if I do ls dash L and then the forward slash, let's see how that is different from the original. And you can see a lot more information here on the screen than before. And everything is basically on its own line. Now normally, everything is kind of jumbled up. So if I do ls and forward slash, you can see the same list of directories, but they're kind of just um, you know all together there. The dash L option is for long listing. That means we basically want to see more details and we want every item to be on its own line. This is actually the one that I recommend, and most distributions have LL, 
for long listing as an alias. It's not an actual Linux command. We'll get into aliases later. A lot of distributions ship with the LL command, but not all of them. Let's see if MX does. Why not? And it does work. LL may not work for you, and that's okay if it doesn't. We'll get into aliases later. But LS-L gives you the long listing, as you can see here. And then LL on some distributions, or probably a larger majority, is just a alias for LS-L. Same difference. So I'll clear the screen. We'll get back to the video in just a moment, guys. But before we do, I just wanted to quickly mention my sponsor, Linode. Linode is an awesome provider of cloud Linux servers, and their Cloud Manager dashboard makes it extremely easy to set up your own Linux server in seconds. Whether you like Fedora, Debian, Ubuntu, or whatever your distribution of choice is, you can have your very own Linux server running your favorite distribution in a geographic location near you with the latest one just recently introduced in Toronto. So go ahead and check out the link in the description below this video where you can get $20 in credit towards your own Linux server. So go ahead and check that out and let's get right back to the video. So what's up with these folders? So I'll do ls-l and then the forward slash. Again, the forward slash is the beginning of the file system. So I'm not gonna go over all of these folders right here, but I am going to talk about a few important ones that you should know about and the first one is home. That's a really important one to know. And as I already did, you know, we have a uh, single folder in there. I already showed you that's mine and that's my home directory. So I could basically just type it an entire path if I wanted to. Every directory is separated by a forward slash and the path starts with the forward slash. And you can see if I do that, I get a listing of contents in my home directory, which is at slash home slash J. If I just do ls, you see I have the same directories here, and that's because I'm actually in the home directory currently. So ls, if you don't give it a path, shows you what the contents of your current working directory. If you don't know what your current working directory is, you could do pwd, so let me clear the screen. You could do pwd for print working directory, and that tells you where you are right now. That's the directory you are attached to. So when you run ls, it's going to show you the listing of contents that's in that directory because I didn't tell it to show me anything else. I just ran ls by itself. So it just defaults to where you're currently located. Now, one thing to note too is the tilde right here, which is very common, that refers to your home directory. It's a shortcut. So I'll get more into that in a moment, but I just wanted you to understand what that tilde is. Now the rest of the prompt here where you have my username and the system name is MX because I didn't actually change it from the distribution default. The bash prompt can change, and we have the dollar sign here, which is very common, and that's customizable, so some distributions will change the prompt accordingly. But the tilde is the same everywhere, or you know, everywhere I've ever seen, that is shorthand for your home directory. Now the CD command is for change directory. So again, if I ls, I'm in my home directory, I see the listings of folders that are in my home directory. Now, if I do CD, I could change to any other directory. So if I just do slash home and do LS, then I see my folder right there. I'm not in that folder, but I am in the home directory, the actual home directory slash home. And we see that instead of a tilde, we have slash home. So slash home, or excuse me, the tilde just represents a shortcut to your actual home directory. So if you do CD tilde, then that takes you back to your home directory. So that's a lot easier to type than cd slash home slash j. I mean, you could simply do that. It does exactly the same thing as cd tilde. Tilde is just shorthand for your home directory, basically. So I could do a, a cd command. I could actually go to the root of the file system. So if I do ls, you can see the listing of directories there at the root of the file system. And again, ls-l shows me the long listing. Now I showed you the home directory. That's where user files and directories are stored or your personal data, if you will. If you create a user, which we'll do in a future video, then that user will get a directory there as well. Every user gets their own home directory. So basically, if I do the listing again, I have my home directory, but since I don't have any other users that I've created, there's nothing else there. So when we go to create users, you'll see a folder for every user that you create. 
But for right now, we just have that one. Now I'll do ll again, or ls-l, doesn't matter. So that's your home directory. Now, I'm gonna get into more detail about these directories in a future video. I've just given you a high-level overview right now. Um, binaries or, you know, programs essentially go in bin, and it's a little bit more complicated than this. We'll get into that later. Um, but basically, the bin directory has a lot of binaries or runnable programs. The boot directory has files and folders or whatever is required for booting the system. So the bootloader will be there, and the configuration for the bootloader will be there. Actually, the bootloader is going to be installed in the master boot record or in EFI, but that's beyond the scope of this video. Basically, all you need to know is that configuration relative to being able to boot your machine is stored here. If you get rid of this directory, bad things will happen. You probably won't be able to boot when you go to restart the machine, so don't do that. The etc directory, I know it says etc in Linux. We always have to pronounce things strange. It's probably one of the first things you'll notice about us. And here we have the etc directory. That's how we pronounce that. And inside there is going to be configuration files. So if I clear the screen and do ls slash etsy, which I could do just actually etsy since I'm in the root file system, we have a lot of information here. We have blue and white. So, okay, well, what's up with that? We even have green. Um, so let me explain that a little bit without going too in detail at this point since we're just starting out. I mentioned before that if it's blue, it's a folder. If it's white, it's a file. And if it's green, it's a program or a binary. That's not always the case, but that's the general rule of thumb. Now, the thing is you can't always rely on the colors because that's not default. Almost all distributions set themselves up to show color when you run the ls command. That's not the way ls is normally. That's just the way that most distributions configure that. It is possible that you might use a distribution that does not colorize the output here. So everything might be white. You can't always go by that. So what can you go by actually? Well, every single file has this little string here at the front. That is the permission string. We're gonna go into that in detail later, but for right now, um, all we're concerned with is the very, very first character. We'll go over the rest of the characters in another video, but for right now, we're just worried about the one on the very, very left. And D is directory. So even if this was white, all of it was white, we would know that this rc4.d directory is a directory, not just because it's .d, which kind of gives it away, but it starts with a D here. So that's a directory. If it's a file, it starts with a hyphen. So this is a file. Now, this can be a little confusing because this is also considered a program, and that's because it has execute privileges. Not going over that right now, but essentially a program is a file. Actually, everything's technically a file, but a program is a file, so it's going to have that even though it's colored green. It's going to be either a hyphen or it's going to be a D if it's a directory and a hyphen for a file, which does include programs. There's other things that we can have here at the very first character that I'm not going to go over. It's just beyond the scope. So the takeaway here is a D is directory and a hyphen is file, like I mentioned. And, you know, we also have L right here, which is a link. This is a symbolic link, something we'll get into later. But basically, we have this link right here, resolve.conf. It's not actually a file. It starts with an L. It's a link. It just links to another file, and it's actually linking to this one right here. It's pretty obvious because it's got like a ASCII pointer right here, and it's just basically linking to this file right there. So I'll clear the screen here. And what else do we have here? Well, we have the media directory. It's very common, and we'll get into this in a future video. When you're mounting uh, additional file systems, or you know, like a you basically, which could mean a hard drive, a DVD, Blu ray disc, thumb drive. It's going to be mounted under media. So right now, if I do ls slash media, there's nothing in there. But if I had something in there, then there might be a subdirectory. So if I plug in an external hard drive, I'll have something there. The slash mnt directory is basically for the same purpose. That's for things we mount manually. Don't worry about that right now. We'll get into that later. I'm just giving you a high-level level, level overview. So if you don't remember the purpose for all these directories in this video, don't worry about it. We'll get back into it. But there's other directories here. I don't want to get too involved into this. There's just a couple more I'm going to go over. Um, root, so it's slash root. It's at the very beginning of the file system. 
That's root's home directory. Root is a user on all Linux systems. That's the God mode user. Root can do everything. So with that said, um, you know, don't, basically you're logging in as your user. And you'll notice if you do ls slash home, we don't have a root home directory here. But root's the only exception. Its home directory is right at the beginning of the hard drive separate out of slash home. And we'll go over user management and changing users in a future video. But for right now, uh, just understand that root is the most powerful user on a Unix or Linux system. And that's uh, definitely the case here. And then we also have the var directory, which we'll go over in a future video. But there's some very important things here, like system logs. That's an example of something that you would find in that directory. So um, with that said, um, you know, that's the, all the folders that I want to go over in this video. But as a quick recap, because we're going to be building on this, the ls command list storage shows you what's in your current working directory. If you don't know what that is, pwd will tell you where you're at. Right now, I'm at the beginning of the file system, which is designated by a single forward slash. I could use a cd command to go into a different directory, like an ls to see what's in that directory. And if I do cd tilde, that gets me in my home directory, which is actually in underneath slash home. And I'm in slash home slash j, that's my home directory. So cd can get you around the file system. ls basically shows you what's in your current working directory. Dash L is very common for me because this is how I like the information presented. As you learn commands, you'll find that there's all kinds of different options to change how things are presented. And this is your first one, ls-l, that just gives you a long listing, which I find is easier. And there's all kinds of things that we could uh, actually go over, but I don't wanna make this video go on for too long. So that's basically it for this video. Each of these videos will, will basically expand on the previous one. So the concepts in this video, don't worry so much if you don't understand them yet. We'll keep going through it, and I guarantee you, you'll definitely understand it if you don't already. So just go ahead and play with the ls command, the cd command, and the pwd command on your system, so that way you know, uh, you know what all that is and what those commands do, and you have a good understanding of that. And then I will see you in the next video as soon as I have that uploaded. So I'll see you there. Thank you so much for watching my video. I really appreciate it. If you want to help me out, make sure you check out the description below this video where you'll find links to my latest book, Mastering Ubuntu Server, second edition, as well as my Patreon page. If you like this video, be sure to click that like button and share it on Twitter or any other social media network. And be sure to subscribe so you'll be the first to see my latest videos as they're uploaded. Thanks again.